Whoops. <laughs> there went the springs. I forgot to take the spring out. What's up, Internet? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to change the fork seals on the YZ250 two-stroke. Hopefully, we'll be riding this Sunday. Um, I did a video on this, but it's been a little bit over two years, so um, it's... It's a good time to make a new one, an updated one. I've got new camera gear, audio recorders, I got lights, I got, it's just gonna be a better quality video. So, let's jump into it. Most of the tools that you're gonna need for this job are pretty standard. Um, ratchet, sockets, a few wrenches. Um, I like to use a T-handle on my triple clamps, a flat tip screwdriver. The only special tools that you really need are a wrench to remove the fork cap. Makes it a lot easier to have one of these. And then an absolute necessity in my book is this fork seal driver. You can see we've got some dowel pins on one side. This fits together. It fits over your fork and it helps drive the fork seal down into the outer tube. Um, this is probably the biggest necessity and they make them in different sizes for different motorcycles but they're all basically the same. And it's really, really difficult to drive the fork seal down into position inside the outer tube um, without one of these. There is uh, one additional special tool that I forgot to mention, and that's this guy. It's got two different slits, and you can see they're different sizes. One's bigger than the other. And uh, it, you know, it's just gonna be easier for me to show you what this is for than it is to explain it. So when we get to that point in the video, I will uh, pull this special tool out and show you what it's used for. As you can see, it's, it's really, really simple. And if you had some spare metal laying around and you had the right cutting tools, you, you could pretty easily make one of these. Um, but they're not that expensive either. So, you know, might as well just buy one. First thing we're gonna do is loosen these two pinch bolts. Again, we're just going to loosen. We don't need to actually remove them. And for the YZ250, I am using a 10 millimeter T-handle. Once those guys are loose, we're going to use a 22 millimeter wrench and take off the axle nut. Once we take the axle nut off, we're going to loosen the pinch bolts on the other side. So once you've got pinch bolts loose on both sides of the wheel, the axle nut is off. You can use a rubber mallet, punch the axle through. If it doesn't want to come out, you can use something like a socket ratchet extension and use the end that the ratchet goes into, stick it in there and just punch it through with your hand, punch it through with the rubber mallet. But also what works is if you take the weight off the axle by holding the wheel with one hand, just kind of move it around. Usually you can get the axle out. With the wheel removed, next thing we're gonna do is take off these fork guards on the YZ250. It's a really small Allen head. We'll use a, uh, we'll use a ratchet to take those off. You don't need a ratchet to do this. Um, I just happen to have sockets with Allen extensions on them, and I just prefer to use those. But you can use a regular old Allen wrench as well. It doesn't really matter. I just think the socket's easier. All right, next step is to take off, not take off, loosen the top two triple clamp bolts. Then we'll use one of our special tools to loosen the fork cap. Then we'll loosen the bottom triple clamp bolts, and then we'll take the fork out. Yay! Where are my tools? Where are my tools? They're on the floor over here. All right. Again, just loosen. Just enough. You don't have to worry about the fork sliding out because you still got the bottom two. Once those are loose. Then we're gonna take this guy got two different sizes on it pop it loose that's it man 
And then we're gonna take off, again, not take off, loosen the bottom triple clamp bolts. I always like to put my foot underneath the fork. I've had some bikes where the fork tube will slide out as soon as you loosen the bottom triple clamp bolts. There's really nothing else holding it in. Um, on my YZ, it doesn't seem to happen. I think it was my Kawasaki that used to happen. Before you take this out, you want to note there are usually one to two lines on the top of the outer tube. And those are alignment marks so that when you push the tube back into the bike, when we reinstall the fork, you push it up through the upper triple clamp. Um, you line it up with either the top mark or the bottom mark, depending on how high you want the fork tube to sit inside the triple clamp. The main thing is to have them both the same on the left side and the right side. Um, but you can actually adjust the fork height and that will, that will change the attitude of the bike as you are traversing the motocross track. Um, <laughs> it'll, you know, if you, if you raise the tube up higher, you go with this bottom mark, some more of the tube is sticking out of the triple clamp. That's going to lower the front of the bike. The bike will turn a little bit quicker, but it'll also make the bike a little less stable in the high speed choppy, um, sections of the track. So it's, it's all about balance, man. But the main thing is whether you line it up with the first mark or the bottom mark, just make sure you do both sides the same and take a, take a look at it. If you haven't taken your forks out before, or it has been a long time, take a look, see where they're at so that you put them back in the same spot that they were, uh, that they were in before you took them out. All right, cool. Down, 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 down. We're going to take that fork cap off and then we'll flip it upside down and drain all of the fluid that's inside this outer tube. First step in breaking loose, first step in separating the inner tube and the outer tube is to break loose this lock nut on the bottom of your fork. If you don't have soft jaws for your vise, you can use a rag. This is a 17 millimeter. Boom. Now it's not going to come all the way out not that easy there's another lock nut inside here and all we're gonna do is loosen it all the way and you'll know because you'll feel the threads kind of start jumping and there it is so once the thread is started uh, once you feel the thread jump you know it's all the way loose and the next thing we got to do is push this guy up look at that Something's coming out of there, like an alien popping out of my stomach. Okay. This is where this special tool comes in handy. So we're actually going to push down on this and we need to push farther than that. There'll be a lock nut underneath that gets exposed. You slide this underneath the lock nut to keep it from sliding back in. So we're gonna press down. There it is. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm trying to go as quick as I can and make a video at the same time because today's Saturday, tomorrow's Sunday, and I wanna go ride motocross. So I need to get this done. All right, so now we're gonna put a wrench. Well, now we're gonna put a wrench right here. This camera's really ticking me off right now. Um, I'm sure it's something I did, but it's still pissing me off. Can you focus on that? Now the screen's all oily. Whoops. <laughs> there went the springs. I forgot to take the spring out. So yeah, um, undocumented step. Yeah, spring, take the spring out. <sighs> okay, this is gonna be fun. So now we're gonna take this um, small screwdriver I changed the camera mode, so it should focus. Yeah, look, it quickly changes focus. So 
Um, I put it in like dumb mode, which is what I mean by that is um, for people that don't know anything about cameras. <laughs> so it's like auto mode is probably more accurate, but we're just gonna pop the dust seal off. And then inside is um, a retaining clip. So there's the clip. You just pop that out again with the little screwdriver. Can you see that? There it is. And then below that retaining clip is the actual fork seal. Here comes a very non-intuitive step. And if you don't believe me, check your service manual. But you're just gonna pull it apart at this point. Just make sure you got that retaining clip out. A couple of yanks. There it is. So we've got the fork seal right here. Dust seal is all the way at the top. Fork seal, we've got a um, little washer and then a couple of shims. When we do a rebuild, we're not doing a rebuild, we're just changing seals, putting fresh oil in. But when we do a rebuild, you change all this hardware. I mean, I don't know about the washer, but this actually rubs against the outer tube up and down as the fork is moving. So these wear out and then all of the grime that comes off of it just gets mixed into your oil. So um, when you do rebuilds, change all of this. Also, when you take those um, pieces of hardware off of the inner tube, keep them in order when you take them off so that you can just kind of reverse the order when you put it back together. So if you have an owner's manual, um, you, should, you should use that. It's good, it's a good thing. Um, we're getting to the point where we're ready to start putting oil back into the fork. Almost, not quite, but we're almost there. Um, typically, at least for the motocross bikes, I imagine street bikes are not too much different. Um, the amount of oil you put into the fork is actually adjustable. There's always a standard amount that they recommend, and then there's a minimum and maximum amount. And the reason why that there's a range that you can put in is so that you can adjust the bottoming resistance. And that's basically when the fork gets all the way to the end of the stroke. How hard do you want the fork to bottom out? Um, I tend to run closer to the maximum amount of oil just because I'm also a little bit bigger and heavier than your average rider. Motocross riders, motorcycle racers in general, are kind of like uh, kind of like horse jockeys. You know, the the best ones tend to be small and light because motorcycles don't weigh that much. So, I mean, for um, for for a motorcycle rider racer, I'm a little bit on the heavier side, and I like to run a little bit more bottoming resistance. So for this bike. 11.2 ounces is the, that's US ounces, is the standard recommended setting. And I will typically run um, a little bit more than that, like uh, 12 ounces even. The maximum they recommend is 13.2, um, I'm sorry, 12.7 US ounces, 10.1 is the minimum. So you, you can put in any amount of fork oil between 10.1 and 12.7 ounces. I'm gonna go with 12 ounces which is just a little bit on the heavier side um, because I, I just like the fork to um, have a little bit more resistance at the end of the stroke before bottoming out. And one thing you don't want to have happen is, is the fork bottoming out completely, the fork seal actually hitting the bottom of the inner tube. You want to avoid that, but you want to use as much stroke as possible, but just, you know, not all of it. I've got some Bell Ray. I've also got some Maxima. I'm probably gonna mix them up, man. Um, because I only have like half of each and I don't think that'll be enough to do both forks. So they're both seven weight oil. Um, so that's another thing to pay attention. I think five weight is probably pretty standard, but you can, you can run um, heavier weight oil and that's what I do. I like seven weight oil. Again, I'm a little bit of a bigger, uh, bigger guy. So um, a little bit more weight on the forks, a little bit thicker fork oil. I just decided to try it once and I've never gone back to five weight. So, yeah, these are not sponsors of the channel. Don't have any sponsors. I don't even have an AdSense account anymore. So at this point, we're gonna put the hardware, dust seal, new dust seal, new dust seal, new fork seal, and the hardware back onto the inner tube. 
and at that point we will reassemble the fork in the opposite way we took it apart that should make sense and then we'll put the fork oil in it then we'll put the cap back on and then we'll put it back on the bike i like to use ratio rights these are kind of nifty it's not going to come through the camera but it's got all kinds of measurements different units all the way around it so i use this to measure the premix that i put into the gas and also um, fork oil when i do fork oil changes get out of here chair you're my way what i say 12 ounces yeah let's go with 12 ounces so i'm gonna put six ounces of maxima and six ounces of bell ray should be an interesting day tomorrow these Bell Ray bottles actually come with this really slick cap and this tube that pops out. It's like an easy to pour thing. All right, so we've uh, got all of our hardware back on in the opposite order we took it off. So you've got your shim here at the bottom. We've got another shim right here, flat washer. Here's our new seal and the new um, oil seals right here. This is the dust seal, it goes all the way at the top. So we're ready to put these back in, but I wanted to share that um, I used a trick to get this stuff on from the Gorilla Biker. So he changed fork seals on his GSXR not too long ago. And basically the trick is you put like saran wrap or some kind of plastic over the tube and a little bit of grease and it just makes it easier to slide the fork seals and dust seals over the inner tube. And so I use that trick. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to the video where he um, changed seals and used that same technique. And I think he got it from another channel, but I don't remember what that is. So I'm just gonna link to his channel. Anywho, we're ready to put this back into the outer tube. Boom, the outer tube. Okay. We're not gonna drive the fork seal into position yet. Maybe we will. Yeah, let's do that now. That should be the next step. So basically this is just half. The two halves wrap around the inner tube and then drive the fork seal. There you go, that's a good look. So the um, fork seal's right here. The fork seal driver We'll then drive the fork seal into the outer tube. We'll put our retainer clip back in um, and then we'll be able to reassemble the fork, put oil in it. Putting oil in it is like next to the last step before you button it all up and put it back on the bike. Okay, so we've got the fork seal driven in to the outer tube. Some of you may wonder like, how do you know that you've gone far enough and the fork seal's in position? So remember there's a little retainer clip that sits inside the outer tube and holds the fork seal in. So once you can see the groove that that retainer clip sits in, you know you've gone far enough with the fork seal and you don't need to go any further. So now we're gonna put the retainer clip in, we'll slide the dust seal on, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the spring and the innards back inside the inner tube. The innards go in the inner tube. Sometimes springs have a top and a bottom, um, but usually it'll be pretty obvious. They'll have markings on one side and the spring might even look a little bit different, like a little bit more bunched up on one end versus the other, but this spring does not. So we've got our, <laughs> um. <laughs> we've got our dust seal um, back in with the retaining clip on the oil seal, put our spring back in don't forget to put this little dude back in. Slide that back in. And then we can put all of this stuff back in the fork. We're going to put the fork cap, thread it back into the outer tube. So that we can do that thing where we use this thing, this thing here, this thing here. 
that thing where we, we got to press and then we slide this underneath the lock nut so that it stays exposed. This thing did that thing. So now we're going to put the fork end cap back on. We're going to lock them together using our wrench, ratchet, and socket. Dude, man, that's it. We're going to put it back in the vise. Remember, if you don't have soft jaws, use a rag. Protect the end of the fork leg. And then, oops, wrong way. We're gonna ride tomorrow. Dude, it's been like three months since I've ridden any motocross, so I'm so excited. It's gonna be like 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the forecast. gonna be freaking awesome so that's it um, we're done for just a uh, seal and fresh oil change it's really not that bad um, all we're gonna do now is take the 12 ounces that we measured off in our ratio right cup pour it inside of the outer tube and then we'll button this guy back up put it back on the bike I'm gonna do the other fork so I can go ride tomorrow um, I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's just more the same but that's that's it. Oh, that's all she wrote. We're done. We're done. We're going riding tomorrow. So I think uh, one final tip I will leave you with. Hang on. Let me adjust this damn camera. Um, wait. Bring this thing down. I'm done. I don't want to stand anymore. Standing bad. Okay. That's a little bit better. Ooh. Everything takes like a gazillion times longer when you're making a YouTube video out of it. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Um, one last tip and then I will end this video. And the tip is when you are reinstalling, you don't need to tighten this cap down a whole lot because it's going to be sitting inside the triple clamps and the triple clamps are what you're going to torque down. And that's going to keep this cap because the cap threads down to somewhere around here. My triple clamp, I run up to, let me see, zoom in. I run my triple clamps. Um, I run my fork tubes up to the top of the triple clamp on the top mark right here. So this bottom mark, so this is all inside the triple clamp. It, and the clamp is, is gonna hold it down. It looks like the screen just went dark. What? I got so much to learn about this camera. Um, but the tip is you don't need to torque this thing down. So I will just hand tighten it, put it in the bike, I'll, I'll use the uh, special tool and snug it up just a little bit, but I don't crank it down very tight because then I'm going to crank down the, the triple clamp. Triple clamp is going to keep it from threading out. You don't, you don't need to torque the caps down. Okay, now I'm done. Done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I got to do the other side. Then we're going to do some motocrossing tomorrow. Um, at a minimum, we'll do some vlogging. Um, so that's all I got. This video is over. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you like this video, Give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Leave a comment. Do all those wonderful things that help my channel because it needs lots of help right now. Um, keep the rubber side down. Look out for the um, next motocross video. We're riding tomorrow. There'll be videos out of that. And ah, that's it, man. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>